Someone once asked if I had put in a, a bench so that they had somewhere to sit as they're coming in. And to me, that's a waste of time and energy because all you do is dust it off as you come through. Uh, we've designed the pharmacy so you don't have to wait. As you come in, there might be a line, but within 10 minutes, we've got you out of our store. Friendly service and a pharmacist who knows you by name. Stapley Pharmacy, your complete family pharmacy. We'll have you out the door in 10 minutes. All right, guys, again, uh, Dixie Flyers next up, and uh, one of the big storylines heading into this year, we'd like to welcome in Coach Munkers, Coach Olofopo, and also uh, representing the team, a couple of the captains, Gavin Graff and Braxton Ibsen. Uh, Coach, if you could just take a couple minutes uh, to talk about the whirlwind that's been since the state championship at Rice Eccles Stadium, team camps, uh, talk about some of the kids, and just give us an overall preview and outlook of the Dixie Flyers. Uh, well, it was a real exciting year for us last year, obviously. I was happy for the kids and the school and the community and everything. And uh, it was exciting for me also. And uh, since then, we kind of put that behind us, and we enjoyed that. And now it was time to go back to work in the weight room and stuff. And uh, kids got back in the weight room about two, three weeks after we got done last year and, and have been lifting and working hard ever since, just like all the other schools have been doing. Uh, went to a couple seven-on-sevens this summer, went up to Weber State uh, early in June and uh, uh, had a good time up there and kids got to know each other a little bit a little bit more and some of the new kids that were filling in in new spots from last year were uh, getting some work in and, and trying to learn the offense and learn the defense and learn a little bit about what they were doing. And uh, a couple weeks later, went down to UNLV, had the same thing, seven-on-seven. We all survived the 106, 107 degree temperatures down there. They start at two in the afternoon, it was really hot. So that was the main battle down there. And uh, we competed down there, did really well, and, and uh, came back, went up to SUU in the end of June at a team camp. And uh, we had 60 guys go up to that camp and uh, full pads and uh, got after it quite a bit with a lot of schools from Vegas. And uh, kids were working hard up there. And you know, the best thing about that is we didn't get anybody hurt. And we're, healthy going into the season and uh, looking forward to, to uh, picking up where we left off last year. Uh, follow up question for coach uh, and then I'll give you some facts real quick. Uh, last season the Flyers of course state championship 11 and 2 overall 4 and 2 in region 9 third seed uh, the road warriors in, in regards to the playoff run average 36 points a game 18.2 given up on the defense side of the ball. And, and coach, the follow question is, is I'm sure you're going to get asked this a, a few times going into this year. How do you place a guy like Blake Barney and some of the other key seniors you lost to graduation? Well, somebody, if you're going to be successful, somebody's going to have to step up and take their place, uh, not only with their play, but with their leadership ability. And uh, we got some guys that are capable of doing that. And uh, I got two of them sitting to my right here. They're very capable of uh, taking up that role. and. And uh, you know, every year that's the that's the thing about high school football. You lose good players. You got to find somebody else. You got a new group of guys, a new team. Uh, they got to step up now that they're seniors, and uh, they're looking forward to the year. And, and Blake is a great player, and and kind of kind of got us going. And now it's these guys' responsibility to keep us going. Uh, real quickly, uh, for those that don't know, Co Coach Lafapo uh, replacing Rick Barry, who was resigned. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Wayne, if I could just get a couple comments on you and your excitement level becoming the new defensive coordinator, especially coming off a state championship. I know you're already on staff at a big part of that run last year. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I definitely got some big shoes to fill, and Coach Rick Berry. Um, coach Rick Berry was a great coach. Uh, you know, for me personally, he was a mentor as a coach and, you know, in the personal aspect as well. So, um, you know, we're, we're excited to come in here, and, and you know, we just want to do what's best for these kids. and. Um, you know, the main thing coming off of that, you know, there's a lot of pressure when you come off a championship run, but, you know, it's helping these kids understand that defending champs doesn't mean you get a pass to defend it this year and you get into the championship game, you know. We got to start at um, ground zero just like when everyone else in, and earn our dues again. So we're excited about the task. All right, we'll come back to uh, Coach Munkers and Coach Olafapo a little bit later, but uh, let's bring in uh, Gavin Graff and Braxton Ibsen, a couple of the – captains of this Dixie Flyer team and uh, Gav we'll start with you and same question for you Braxton just talk about your role on the team as a captain and a leader and your excitement level uh, trying to get this thing going and maybe duplicate last year um you know it's going to be uh, tough this year um filling in um coming back and trying to defend it and uh 
it's gonna um, it's just gonna take a lot of work, but I think we have the talent that we can we can do whatever we want to do. Um, just working hard. Um, yeah, Braxton. Um, I'd say you know when you're the defending champs, it's always tough. Every team's gonna be gunning for you, and Region Nine's tough. You're in, you're in, and you're out. We've seen that. But uh, right now, just training camp, trying to put in our dues and make sure no one's working harder than us. Uh, we can open it up to the players for uh, some Q&A from the media for Gavin Graff and Braxton Ipsen. Gavin, how's it going to be playing without your brother? I know you guys <laughs> you know, you've been together a long time. Yeah, I got to play with him for three years on the same team. But uh, it's going to be a little different, but um, do OK. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just going to be a little bit different not having him there. But. Was he, like as an older brother, was he the kind of guy that, that helped fire you up, or was it just a competitive nature? Um, with and against your brother and stuff? Or? Yeah, we, we were uh, each other's biggest fans, so we were always, uh, I mean, we were all always pushing each other and everything. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we always wanted to be better than each other, so that's how it's always been. So I guess, yeah. Be a little bit different. Like, question, guys. Both of you guys, uh, you know, sometimes at Dixie High, it's been tough to find offensive linemen, defensive linemen size. I know the deck was shuffled a little bit during the season last year. Obviously, it worked out great. Uh, talk about your roles uh, as you know on the line or tight end or whatever position Coach Munkers has in store for you this year. Yeah. Well, a little bit different for me this year. Uh, this training camp, I got asked to play left guard, which I'm not comfortable with as I'm speaking. But I'm working on it. You know, it's something that I haven't been playing. So I'm working on that just as much as I am defensive end, trying to get comfortable with our offense. But I'm excited for the role and the challenge and whatever I can do to help the team. Yeah, I've, I've played every line position. But um, right now, I'm going to be playing center. But um, I'm hoping that I'll be ready to play wherever. But um, we should have uh, some really good athletes coming in to play offensive line. We've got Jackson coming back, Jackson Davis to He's probably going to be playing tackle, left tackle, and then uh, we just got a few other guys that have been we played with for three, four years now, and we should be pretty solid as long as we put in the work. This question is for Gavin. Uh, what do you do as a, as a returning starter that's, that's won a state title? You guys are going to have to break in a new quarterback. You know, as 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 the center, uh, what do you do to to help make him uh, be the most at, at ease? Um, you know, just. I think the biggest thing is just making sure he uh, feels comfortable, knows that our offensive line is going to be blocking for him and that he can sit in the pocket. We just It's going to be a lot on us to make sure that um, our new quarterbacks are comfortable. And so that will be probably one of the biggest challenges for us. Will there be extra pressure on you? Blake was so good at making quick decisions uh, where you have a new guy who's, who's still learning how to do that. Um, I I think we have a lot of confidence in our quarterbacks right now. I think they're going to do a great job. Just they're they both know the offense pretty well, and they're they've got a lot of the same qualities that Blake does um, as runners and throwers and everything. So it'll be a lot the same. I there will probably be a little bit more pressure, but really not too much. Braxton, t t talk about your workload, sport to sport to sport, of playing three sports, and uh, talk about uh, how how the transition goes, and how do you balance your summer between you know baseball tournaments? I know you you were back in the Midwest doing a lot of baseball, but you you made it to some of the camps as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's I mean it's tough. It's something I've done ever since I was a little kid, though. So I mean I'm kind of used to it. But this summer, definitely trying to balance my time. I've been trying to put in some time conditioning just on my own so that I come into training camp in shape, but still I got work to go. But definitely this uh, summer I had a lot of great opportunities in both football. Talked to SUU a little bit, and baseball talked to quite a few schools. So I'm excited for the school year, try to decide on my future. Um, I'm pretty undecided. I still don't know whether I want to play football or baseball. So anything can happen at this point. Guys, a follow-up question. Is, is there pressure? Do you feel like you have a, a bullseye? Do you feel like everybody's going to be gunning for the Flyers this year? Uh, yeah, and I expect that. I mean, everyone should gun for us. We're the returning state champs. But honestly, during practice, I felt loose. I'm ready to go. I mean, if we could play today, tonight, I would. I'd start the season tonight. You know, work for that 
that too. We, yeah, we could. <laughs> we could. It's going to get going. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for uh, Braxton Ibsen or Gavin Graff? Do, do you guys know who the starting quarterback is? And, and, and it, I mean, do you, at that point, it would rally around that person? Or is, is this a big secret that we haven't gotten to yet? Or? I would ask Monkers that one. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm good with either one, though. They're both going to do great. So uh, I'd say it's probably a secret. I bet both of them will get their opportunity to show what they can do in a game situation. So I'm glad I'm not the one making the decision. Guys, t talk about your, your skill position. I mean, it sounds like both of you guys are going to be blocking for a lot of talented guys coming back. I mean, it's pretty, pretty well known that you return all your wide receivers. You got Hildebrandt and Batchelor and Appel and, and Tanner Webster and all these skill position players. Uh, is... is does that make you guys as dangerous as any team in the state again? I think so. I mean, I'm excited to start the year. Um, I'm definitely confident in the offensive line just as much as I am our receivers. Uh, seeing what the receivers can do and their speed and quickness and elusiveness, um, get our O-line to block for them, and they can do some dangerous things on the side. <laughs> Um, actually, when Coach Barry resigned, it was a big surprise to me, but when Wayne got called to be the defensive coordinator, that wasn't such a uh, surprise. Those two worked a lot together last year, and for the most part, as far as I know, we're on the same page. So I don't think things will be too different. Um, the whole team's familiar with Coach Wayne and what he stands for, and I'm very excited to have him as head of our defense and excited to see what our defense can do this year. Any other questions for... Uh Gavin Graff or Braxton Ibsen? Will you guys be playing both ways, Iron Man or Platoon, or do you know at this point? Yeah. Um, as of right now, I'm playing both ways. Gavin will probably step in and play a little bit of both ways, too, I think. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Gavin. Thanks, Braxton. Uh, let's now go back over to Coach Blaine Munkers and Coach Alo Lupo. Did I say it right, Wayne? Close enough? Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> and uh, open up for questions from the coaches. Uh, and Coach, obviously, uh, your thoughts on your quarterback replacing a great one in Blake Barney and what a career he had. Uh, how's the battle shaping up? Well, it's a close one right now. We have Ammon Takao, who uh, played with us last year, and we have Jaden Harrison, who moved in. It's going to be a sophomore. Ammon will be a junior. Uh, they're both taking reps with the first group, uh, taking equal reps right now, and, and uh, you know, nobody separated themselves from the other one yet, so uh, it might be... Uh, up until the couple days before the first game before I decide who's going to start. Uh, if we started tomorrow, they'd both get reps in the first game to see how they, how they do under pressure and, and uh, take a look at both of them. And uh, they both do a good job. The good thing about it is they're both good enough athletes that they're uh, you know, willing enough they can go over and play another position and, and still have the experience of, of playing the game of football. But uh, it's going to be a while before I make that decision. It's a tight race right now, and they're both doing really well. Coach, uh, as a follow-up to that question, uh, this Darren Cole, St. George News, is are they similar in style or do they have varying uh, skill sets with as far as passing and running or are they about, about the same? They're about the same. Uh, Ammon's a little bit bigger in stature and, than Jaden is. And, uh, you know, uh, Ammon was ahead there for a while just from knowing the offense from the year before and Jaden have to learn everything. But uh, Jaden's catching up in a hurry and, and they're both about equal. They both have strengths. Ammon's got a really strong arm and – and uh, control the ball quite a ways. And, and uh, Jaden runs really well. He's a hard runner, hard hitting kid. So uh, they both have their qualities. Uh, you know, and, and a, a coach may have a two quarterback system. Somebody may use them both, but uh, I'll decide on a starter and, and we'll, we'll just ride with that guy till uh, see where he can take us. Where are you at running back position wise, coach? Uh, Joe Tical will uh, get the starting nod. He got a lot of reps there last year, him and Taylor Berry. And, uh, we have a sophomore that didn't play last year in Trey Miller. Uh, he had to take a year off. He had broken his leg as an eighth grader, so didn't play as a freshman. Uh, he's looking real good. Tanner Webster is going to have to move from slot into the uh, backfield some. So that will be a posi position where we'll be able to platoon and get a lot of work out of those guys because uh, all three of them will also be playing on the defensive side of the ball. Coach, other than that, you Uh, no, it's about the same. Uh, 
I know Coach Chapman, We've I've seen him at seven on sevens before, and I know he does a good job. And uh, He's come down to Dixie State camp, I think, every year since I've been here. So I've gone over there and watched him there. And, and uh, he's a solid coach, and they have a solid program. So, uh, you know, that's, they're going to fit real well into Region 9. They're well coached. They have good kids. Uh, they're going to play hard, and, and, and they're going to battle to the end, and, and they're going to fit right in with all the rest of the schools down here. Yeah, we got a, a couple other ones. I mean, we're we're really deep at receiver, which which is good. Uh, obviously, we had the four starters back from last year, but uh, Connor Aiken's doing a real good job for us. Keenan McLean's doing a good job for us. I uh, have confidence those guys can come in and give guys a rest. Uh, right now, Connor will probably be starting a corner on defense. So uh, uh, there's some battles going on, and we'll rotate, you know, six, maybe seven guys in at receiver, and and. Uh, Offensive line, uh, you know, we got five or six guys that are they're that capable of, of playing there, and and then we have some good backups down out of younger kids. So uh, there's there's still some battles going on. We haven't gotten full pads yet. We we'll do that tomorrow or Saturday morning. So uh, there's still some battles that that positions to be won. One of the things that today, coach, has been how tough it is to get teams to come down here to play in the preseason. Uh, I know that you got Riverton down here. I'm not sure how you did that, but uh, is that a, a really a hard battle for you every single year? Uh, it has been. Uh, you know, every year we get done playing Springville, they keep saying they're not coming back. And then about two weeks after the season's over, they'll call me up and say, you want to play again? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So uh, we've played them probably eight, maybe nine times in the last six years. Uh, we saw them twice in the playoffs, two years in a row. So uh, that's kind of been a good starter for us and a good starter for them. And... Uh, so, you, you know, they're, they're kind of unwilling, and then they kind of change their mind. But uh, Riverton, I know the coach up there pretty good, and, and uh, he's happy to return the game down here. And, and uh, it has been a little bit tough, but the, it, I think it is for everybody. You know, you, coaches or teams, for whatever reason, make somebody mad, so they drop them, and they're scrambling for games. So I think everybody's kind of in the same boat. It's just a little bit easier when you're up there when there's so many schools so close together. Well, I think last year, you know, Blake was obviously a great leader and uh, everybody kind of rallied around him. But at the same time, I think we had a lot of good senior leadership last year. I don't think it, if it comes from one guy, I don't think that's going to work for you. Uh, it's got to come from a lot of guys. You know, we had Jesse Lambert, who was a great leader. And, and you know, talk about an unselfish guy. You know, he always wanted to be a linebacker and a, and a running back and whatever. And he's willing to go play D-line and O-line and be the center. You know, and that's an unselfish act right there just to go do that. It shows that he's a team member. Uh, you know, Taylor Berry's the same way. Uh, Chris Abraham, the same way. We just had a lot of guys, I think, uh, that were really good leaders. They led by example. They worked hard every day. Uh, they were very uh, game time. They were ready to go and played hard. So, you know, Blake was just kind of in that position where he gets all the notoriety. But I think, you know, even if you ask Blake, you know, those guys had con as much contribution to, to winning the state title as he did. Obviously, Blake, you know, got all the recognition because of the position. But uh, I, I know if he was here, he'd give some credit to his teammates. Well, you know, coming off of last year's teams, I think we've lost five or six starters. So we've got some voids to fill. But at the same time, we do return some some, some good starters. You know, Braxton Ibsen, um, 
it was a big part. Braxton in the playoffs uh, played with, you know, it was in the intensity he played with and the level he played with. If he can carry that on for us this season, I mean, not only is he going to do great for our team, he's got a shot at football in the long term. I know he's at a crossroads right now deciding which, which route to go, but I'll tell you what, if we see the same Braxton we saw in four games in the playoffs, he's got a shot. That's my opinion. Um, but, you know, we still got some voids to fill. As, as Devin alluded to earlier, as far as O-line, D-line, um, you know, I don't think we drink from the same pipeline as uh, Pine View and Desert Hills and Snow Canyon. For some reason, uh, we get these 5'11", 5'10", guys that are definitely not 270 or 300. But, they, you know, the two things that we'll take any day over, over, you know, the thing about being 5'11", and all that is that, you know what, these kids have to rely heavily upon technique. You know, and that's the one thing that we really stress is technique, technique, technique. Because they don't, they're not 300 pounds where they can just take plays off and lay on a guy because they'll get toppled over. So they understand that there's two things. It's their will, which is their heart, and then their technique that's going to carry them on. And that's what really helped us last year. And that's what we th depend upon with the mold of guys that we get. I mean, so we got to find that D-line. There's a couple positions there we need to fill the void in. We have with the, our other DN. We're calling our DNs this year bookends. You know, we've got Braxton Ipsen, and we got Shad, who's about 6'6", six, six, and his wingspan, I swear, is like 10 feet, so he's going to be hard to throw over. So that's a good plus. You know, he, we moved him down from free safety to D-line, and, and that will be a hard one to get those routes over into the flat and things like that. So hopefully that will be a deterrent for some of those passes. So, you know, and then we got Appel that's, you know, what we, Coach alluded to earlier is we got a lot of guys that were depending on playing both ways, and that's going to be key for us. That's going to be the difference of uh, playing 10 games and going home or, or making another run in the playoffs. Coach Marcus, three years ago you had uh, a young kid named Blake Barney who, who you had to teach how to be a quarterback. He's been a running back his whole life. Now you've got some other new guys coming in. It, do you have to change, as a coach, I guess you have to adjust and change your mindset uh, depending on who's in there and how much experience they have? Yeah, I, you know, I think, I, I think you have to treat them a little bit different, not in necessarily the way you coach them or, or – uh, the way you coach him in technique and stuff like that. But mentally, I mean, I was a lot tougher on Blake as a senior, obviously, than I was as a sophomore. Uh, you know, as a sophomore, if he made a mistake, we just kind of, you know, talked through it, tried to work it out, you know, got in the film room, worked things out. And it was, uh, you know, kind of a learning experience. And, I, you know, mentally, a sophomore is not even close to a senior. But as a senior, you know, the expectation a little higher. And, and uh, you know, the communication is a little different. And, uh, you're a little bit harder on a guy as a senior and you are a sophomore. So, you know, I, I like to bring these guys along. They've got a lot of pressure uh, being the quarterback as it is, so I kind of like to bring them along and, and uh, you know, get them, get them broke in a little bit. Funny story, when I, a long time ago, a long time ago, I had a quarterback one time and I was screaming at him or something, and he says, you know, Coach, I can hear really well. I can hear you just as well if you don't scream as if you do scream. So... I kind of learned from that, and I've, I've quit hollering and screaming so much. How many laps did you make him run after he said that? <laughs> <laughs> that was in a game. Oh. <laughs> Dixie here at the uh, Region 9 Media Day, and Coach Munkers, Coach Alofapo, and uh, Rax Nipson and Gavin Graff. Final questions for any of the Flyers. I, I got one for Coach Alofapo. Uh, he, he recently resigned as a player coach for the Dixie Rebels, which I, I covered. And the reason I was told was so he could spend more time with his family. Did your wife curse Coach Monkers when he elevated you to uh, defensive <laughs> no, no, coordinator? No, no, no. You know, that's a hobby for us. You know, this right here is, is what we really are passions at. You know, my wife, as we all know, to be a coach, you got to have a great woman that supports you. And, you know, my wife was a three-sport athlete in, in high school, so she gets it. And, um, you know, when I said that, I always knew that this, this was the one sport area of football I wasn't going to give up was high school because it's my passion and I love it and we all know we don't do it for the money so it, it's great we, my wife she's got my back coach uh, final comment from you before we wrap things up all right coach Monkers coach Lothpo and also uh, our players here Gavin Graff practicing thanks for coming and great job good luck this season Mike Andy back over to you guys